All these years people have been saying, Stu, you keep rabbiting on about EVs. If you think they're so good, just shut up and buy one. And a few weeks ago, I did. But probably not what anybody was expecting. I hardly slept last night because I was thinking about my first electric vehicle that's arriving today. And here it comes, right now. Such a big drop in front of us with this electric car. Oh God, it's got a ding in it. Yes, of course I knew about the ding. Why did I buy it? Well, I need lots of bits for my electric Porsche 928 project. Not the motor, it's mainly the batteries I want. Before we have a look at the car, let's just wind the clock back a week or two to when I first told Matt about my plans with the MG. Okay, so, shall I tell you what kind of batteries we're getting? I bought a crashed MG ZS EV. So one of the little front wheel drive oh, SUVs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's had a front on crash, it's a repairable write off. And the good thing about that is that they've got brick style batteries. So there's 18 of them, and they're, they're each about 12 kilos each, 12 to 13 kilos. Mm. So it's about 210 kilos of batteries. But you can spread around the car if you need to. Mm. You can put, to get the weight balance right, we can put 12 in the front, 6 in the back, whatever it takes. Now, 44 kilowatt hours isn't quite as much as I would have liked, uh, but it'll still give a decent range for the car. Mm. The current capacity, they can supply about 600 amps, which is just about enough for the, for the Tesla motor we're going to put in. Mm. So that's the plan. Tesla motor, the batteries will spread around the place. We'll get an aftermarket controller, reflash the inverter. This is all territory that's been done before, not by us, but by other people. Yeah. And that gives us the basic of the car. The major task for me is a battery management system, because mm -hmm. you've got to, each of those 18 batteries has got 12 cells in it yep. and every single cell needs to be monitored individually sure so when you charge it. Yep. Now the thing is batteries you think oh they'll get a lot of load on them when you're accelerating and braking. No, the most of the load comes when you're charging mm -hmm. because that's when you're feeding a lot of energy in. So with a bit of luck with the MG it's got high speed DC charging. So we don't have to just charge from a power point mm -hmm. or low charge rate AC, we can use DC as well. Mm. If we can figure out how to, how to make it work. Mm. So my thinking is we'll use as many bits out of the MG as we can sure. in terms of DC to DC converter, the high voltage cabin heating system, the electric air conditioner, mm. the brake accumulators electric, and of course the charging system, the DC and AC charging systems, because mm. it's designed to work with those batteries. Mm. So hope we'll see what we can do. Mm. I so might be dreaming here, but that's the plan. That's good. Yeah. Now, get back to work, because this <laughs> range is not going to fix itself. <laughs> that's right. Now, as I said, even if I get nothing else from this car, it's that high voltage battery that I want. And to buy those batteries new, about $20,000. So I bought this car instead. It has, I think, just the right kind of batteries for my project. I don't know how good they are, but we will find out. Did it have a key? Oh, I did, yeah. Oh, good. So I bought this wreck, sight unseen, 1,000 kilometres away, and had it delivered to me for under 5,000 bucks. So together, let's find out if it was worth the punt. What I wasn't expecting, she even came with... These are really hard to come by if you haven't got one. Next job, Matt and I will have to go through and try and figure out what works and what doesn't. Hello, look who's coming. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. How are you? How are you? I've brought you a present. Look at that. It's just arrived, just off the towy five minutes ago. Look, you can even open the bonnet. Uh, orange cables. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> can I just say one thing before we even start? Um, these things are frigging dangerous, okay? Yeah. We've got 400 volts. It only takes 60 volts to be dangerous. This has got 400 volts. Unreal. At 600 amps, that's 240,000 watts. That's enough to put you on your bum. So don't, don't get hurt. Yeah. Okay. No touching of. Gee. We'll figure it out together. Yeah, that's it. We'll, we'll be safe. I won't even tell you what the bits Gee, are. Hey, look at it. That's the motor in, as well. Down in there. The, yeah, that's it. The down transaxle. Yeah. Yeah, front wheel drive. I'll just rest this on my head. Yeah. So this is your inverter. So you've got AC here, mm -hmm. going down to the motor. DC here. Yep. Um, this will be our charger. Mm -hmm. And there's a DC to DC converter under there as well, which takes the 400 volts and turns it down to 12 to charge the battery. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm hoping to do, and I haven't even done this yet, is connect the battery mm. and see if we can get the dash to light up. Because guess what's in my pocket? Oh, magic. 
How good's that? Yeah, at least we have a key. That's Getting so a locksmith out for a new car. Yeah. He may have the tools, he may not. Yeah. But that's good. And, and look at this. That'll come out with a bit of luck, with a bit of helping hand. Yeah. So we've got a charge port's intact. I yep. thought, being in front on crash, I thought that might have been dinged. That's the radar module. Oh, yep. Uh, I haven't even opened it up. It doesn't look like it's leaked any coolant or... Mate, it's all... Yeah, which it's, is good. it's just like a bought one. Yeah. And airbags have gone off. And what's in the bag? <gasps> look at this. Still got the baby oh, capsule. Geez. Hope the baby was okay. I'm sure they would have been. Look how well yeah. set it. So how did he get off the truck? Was it... He it connected the battery and that, and that turned the electric parking brake off. Oh. So she's a roller. Wow, that's great. Mate, it's win-win. Yeah. You know what I'm hoping for? I'm hoping to find charge leads in the boot. Then we could, uh, imagine if it'll charge. Yeah. Should we put some power on the battery and see if we can get the dash to light up? We definitely should. I'm not gonna get airbagged the second time. You're the voltage specialist. If there's well, high volts involved, involved spark, I'm not going near it. Little Sorry. spark, that's good. Unlock. Oh, unlock did something. Yep. There it is. Beautiful, lock. Oh, good. Magic, yeah. Mate. Oh, and we got a dash, we got hazards. This really is our first time doing this. This is not a setup. Start. Oh, oh wow, look at that. We've got a screen. Danger, evacuate vehicle safely. Side airbags, I suppose, could are a potential risk. Dare we do this? Do it. No. Hang on. Reversing camera. Oh, wow, this is so good. No, it's not going anywhere. And drive and drive but it's not going anywhere okay that's because the yeah it's it's, it's an emergency situation so it's disconnected the the battery ah uh, gotcha or it's sure. or it's just disabled the whole yeah. drive drive situation brake push see the bottom oh yeah i can see the little lines full oh wow almost full battery gee that's good that's good because it's yeah. going to be it's going to be sitting for a while not doing yeah, much definitely do you know how long it's going to take us to try and figure out how everything works in this car? <laughs> how long have you got? <laughs> I suspect I've got more time than you do. What's it saying? Under no circumstances power up this car, otherwise you'll get... It's been recorded as a repairable write-off. Repairable write-off. It's funny how it says right-hand front chassis rail, left-hand front chassis rail, airbags, seat belts. There's all these little telltale signs. Look at this on the floor. That's the Rego. It had 596AV8. Wow. It was the Rego in Queensland, so... It looks like somebody's only just bought it. Yeah. 40, 41 grand. Wow. And look, she's lost a, lost a bangles, come off in the crash. Wow. Never connected to an MG, so. Yeah, okay. It's got a light here saying, uh, I think that's saying the high voltage battery's not connected. Ah, yes. Do a scan. It's okay, a 2020 it's... model. MG ZS EV. So, we could just try, they're just MGZS, we could just try the basic. I wonder if they've got a home address set in it, new route. Uh, I'm guessing there's one address in there. Mm. So you could, we, we've got a, a greeting card. Probably say, hey, we found you, we've got your stuff, we'll send it back. When you buy one of these cars, you're promising you won't contact the previous owner. Oh, really? Mm. Wow. They don't want you to hassle people about, tell me about your car. Yeah. If you're trying just take to your garage door opener back, I'm sure they'd want that. Yeah, you know? the baby seat, the garage door opener. It's talking to it. It's scanning all the systems. Back. Look at that. Mate, let's just fix this car. Yeah, that's And forget it. about the electric 928. This is nicer than all of our cars we drive. Are you having fun yet? Yeah, it's, it's nice to see, okay, we, we have the Porsche, we know what we're working with there. But now we have the other piece of the puzzle. And going, oh, that's not going to fit. Hey, look at all this room, you know. Mm. Um, BCM. Well, of all the computers that scanned, it's just unhappy with one computer. Really? Yeah. So yeah, we've got um. Just the battery control module. So. Which is in, what, indicating a fault. So that's the body control. It's moved slightly. Oh yeah. There's yeah. a lot, to, lot to learn. There is, isn't there? Shopping list: Vitabrits, water, chicken, oh. carrot sticks, bananas. Every car tells a story. And this is a family where they haven't had a good day. Minor bingle. And the insurer's written the car off. Why would you write a car off like that? With a minor bingle like that? That surely hasn't moved the chassis rail. Yeah. That's, it's just panels. 
Mate, this car is so much better than I thought. Hey, why don't we get it back on the road and just sell it? Yeah, that's it. We'll pull the rails straight. Oh! <gasps> Charge cables? Righto. That's oh. good, hey. What are we going to call it? It needs a name. Albie? Albie? No, Meg. My, my mother's name. Oh, Margaret yeah. Greaves. It's Suit Meg. Suitable name. Mate, we'll figure all this out. Yeah. What we're going to do, here's my plan. Are you ready? We can take everything out of the car and set it up all on the garage floor and get it working. Out of the car. And you go, hey, we've got a charger, we've got air conditioner, we've got power steering, we've got... Just get it all working and then just put it into the 928. How hard would that be? And if you had a breakdown and, and MG Assist got called out, they'd never find it because it's no, in a Porsche. That's right. OBD plug, all the diagnostics are like MG. Where do we put our fuel in this one? In here. In there. There you go, look. right there, look. And it plugs okay. Interesting to be finding out where the um, the big main circuit breaker is and yeah, yeah, do they blow or is it something resettable? Or is it, yeah, that's right. How do you reconnect the high voltage stuff so that yeah. it actually move? Because man, if it was drivable, that'd be really helpful. We should helpful. plug in the scan tool and just see what it says. It'll be hiding somewhere in there and yeah. I have to get our gloves look, out. You could say we could use the motor out of this, but it's not going to cut the mustard to put an MG's motor in a Porsche, I'm afraid. It's, yeah. it's got like a hundred and hundred kilowatt or something. Yep. That's not enough. I, I hardly slept last night yeah. thinking about all the things that could have wrong. Thinking, what if there's no key? Oh, mate, that's the biggest thing. Isn't that beautiful? Especially because we need a key for what? Just to test it. And MG weren't particularly helpful yesterday, you know, because I was envisaging a car that could not be moved, that was locked solid, yeah, had absolutely. the parking brake locked on and couldn't even be towed. And they said, just bring it down. And, you know, I said, no, no, you're missing something here. That's like 30 k's an hour. Yeah. Can we turn the AC on while it's like yes, this? Yes, yes. Sure can. It's got no faults in there. Mate, wouldn't it be good if we can use the AC? Imagine that, just it's like Imagine. a mobile cool room. AC in a Porsche is incredibly complex and really old by now. Mm. Imagine if you could use, you're, you're an AC guy, you understand how they work. So Imagine we if you could use this. AC indicator request off, so we put that on, so it's just told us, so now, so there you are, welcome to episode 5 of the 928, electric 928 project. With Meg. With Meg. So you'd think an electric 928 is just going to be a case of chucking some batteries in a motor and away you go. There's an awful lot of ancillary systems. Um, the battery needs cooling system and heating system. Mm -hmm. The engine needs, the electric motor needs a cooling system, but it's got to be separate from the other one. You can't run the same radiator for both because you might be heating one and cooling the other. I see. Um, as well as that, the electrics are quite complicated and that's beyond our skill set, so we're going to need extra help there to get that right. The good news, I've been doing a weight balance exercise with these new batteries. The total weight of the batteries is around 210 kilos. The total weight of the 928 motor alone is around 280 kilos, so that's coming out. Plus all the drivetrain, the torque tube, the gearbox, the diff and everything. A weight balance exercise shows the weight of a standard 928 is about 1,500 kilos. By my projections, it should come in about 150 kilos lighter at least. So we should be under 1,350 kilos all up. Unreal. Um, which is great because the Tesla motor technically isn't quite as powerful as the V8, uh, in both in power and torque, but on the road it will feel much more powerful because that torque comes in so early. Mm. So we're not building a rocket ship here, we're building a car that will accelerate and do everything at least as well as a standard 928, and I reckon it'll be quicker, so. For sure. You missed one. <laughs> That's it, <laughs> double check every door. How much do you charge when I talk to you while you're working? Extra? Every bolt, every bolt I do up. Six, and if I give $6. you advice, it triples the fee. And That's it. And if I had to go at it myself and it hasn't worked, then it's quadrupled the fee. It's even more. Yeah. You know, Bruce Buchanan, bless his heart. He said, oh, I really support you in this project. You realise it's going to take you four years and you'll, you'll end up giving up because it'll all be too hard. But other than that, I really support you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, sure. Bruce. It's a vote of confidence. Now, many of you know Bruce, and we all like to laugh at Bruce's in-your-face pejoratives. But he's got a good point, and it would be folly to mock him for the sake of a cheap gag. He didn't get to be as old and ugly as he is working 10 hours a day for 40 years fixing and modifying Porsches without getting just a little bit of insight into project management. 
So I actually need to pay attention and listen. It's easy to put my optimistic dad hat on and say things like these, and these are all things I do say. A big project is just a whole lot of little projects. You can start anywhere, you just have to make a start somewhere. And that's fine, but a project like this needs a bit more planning than that. The reality is it could actually work out like so many other failed car projects. The actual steps to major car projects by idiots who don't know what they're doing. Wild enthusiasm. Rush out and buy the car you want to convert. Print the t-shirts, do some of the fun work, spend way more money than you expected on stuff that doesn't seem to be progressing you anywhere, hit your first major stumbling blocks, realise your budget was ridiculously small, realise how many tasks you don't have any idea about the skill sets required, not to mention the enormous number of jobs you've completely overlooked, total disillusionment, the pit of despair, and getting distracted by other things for a few years while fending off people asking, whatever happened to your electric 928? And then finally cobble together something that basically works but looks like shit and impresses nobody, claim it's finished, and never complete all the things you need to do to actually finish the job. So that's how it could work out. And that would be really sad. So how can we prevent that? What I need to do is set some milestones. And whenever we hit a milestone to rejoice and celebrate and rebuild enthusiasm for the next step. And make sure you pay attention to people who do actually know what they're talking about. But importantly, I must also never lose sight of the vision just how cool an electric 928 will be when finished and done properly.